Well, here's what you wrote. So this is dad started doing some journaling right then, which I, you know, like you said, Sean, it continues to impress me that dad is just, he's trying to help other people. He's staying engaged. So at, at that time, he started dictating some journals, um, you know, to my mom. And, and for many people with Alzheimer's, it becomes increasingly hard to to type or to read or to write. But, um, you know, mom was ready to listen and write stuff down. And so dad's first journal uh, started like this. Uh, this is October 16th, 2018. And dad said, my name is Mark Macy. I'm 56 years old today. And I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. No whining. No quitting. Overcome. Community. Community. Teamwork. Teamwork. Tough Tough Tougher together. together. No Hey, hey to my mother family, OCR brothers and sisters, and to you listening right now. We share a world, so you are my peeps too. I am your mirror man and host of Tough Mudder's No Excuses podcast, Sean Corvell. In this episode of No Excuses, I am speaking with Travis Macy and his father, Mark Mace Macy. The two are elite endurance athletes that competed together on the same team on the popular network reality show, World Toughest Race Eco Challenge, Fiji. And this was after Mark was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Mark Mace Macy is a well-known figure in the endurance sports world. He is considered one of the pioneers in the ultra endurance race community and admired for his many accomplishments, including being one of the few people who finished all eight eco challenges held from 1995 to 2002. Travis, his son, is a finisher of over 130 ultra endurance events. He founded Macy College Consulting, and working with his wife, it became a successful education consultant firm. He's an endurance coach, podcaster, athlete, father, and author of the book, A Mile at a Time. All this, and now he and his father, together with their family, are taking on maybe the biggest challenge of their lives, Alzheimer's. This is a conversation of extraordinary challenges and achievements, and a beautiful father-son relationship. Here is Travis Macy and his father, Mark Mace Macy, on No Excuses. Hey there, Mr. Travis Macy, Mr. Mark Macy. Thank you guys so much for being on the podcast today. This is an honor for me. Uh, I try to, with uh, our No Excuses podcast, to, to get these great inspirational, motivational stories. We talk to these great athletes as well as the everyday person that's out there doing phenomenal things, uh, sort of contributing to this world and, and sharing their challenges. And you guys check all those boxes. Plus, I love just the idea of the father-son relationship and that you both are taking on this challenge that your father's going through with Alzheimer's together. Uh, you guys did the eco challenge race that big race that we saw on television uh, mark burnett uh, uh, i believe produced so there's so much i want to talk to you about and once again thank you so much for being here uh quick hello and how are you guys doing right now yeah doing well sean thanks for thanks for having us awesome to be here with you awesome to be here with the ocr community um dad and i have been lucky enough to kind of float around from der- various communities in the uh, endurance sports world and ocr is uh, is one of them especially for uh, for for dad dad was the uh, age group world champion in spartan uh, a few years ago but uh yeah we're, we're doing well i had a, i had a nice run this morning i went up to Leadville, Colorado, and uh, went for a run with uh, Sugar Ray. He's a pack burro that I've been training with, so I uh, had fun with that. And Dad, you got out for a run this morning too, right? Did you get out with some, some friends? Did you go with running with Marsh or something? Yeah, we went out for, I don't know, six six hours, something like that. Yep. Yeah, that's Dad, amazing. Dad and that's the dad's dad's old buddy Marshall Ulrich. Uh, some people may saw him on on the original Eco Challenges and also on that that newest one, World's Toughest Race. So uh, they're hanging together, spending time together. Um, you know, they're they're a great team. Mar- Marshall uh, uh, 
has he's been a huge piece of our team. I mean, after after they ran today, he he climbed up on a ladder, right, Dad, and fixing woodpecker holes in mom and dad's yeah, house. He did. <laughs> I think he's 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 71. So I don't know if Marsh wow. is doing any OCR races, but man, he's still hitting it hard. And uh, you know, I told him don't climb up the ladder, but he did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm at that age now where 71 doesn't sound old to me anymore. I'm like, 71, he's a young Sprite man. Of course he's climbing up things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Let me say this, guys, uh, before we go on, and, and definitely want to talk to you about the you guys' team, team Endure, I believe, in the Eco Challenge. But before I go there, because one, Mark, your father, it was a tremendous athlete, uh, one of those people that we feel uh, was a pioneer in the endurance and and trail running and OCR even, if you want to say, him and his contemporaries. And I mean, just really great at it. When you go out, I would encourage anybody, go and Google the name and you're going to see some of the accomplishments that this man has done. He's almost like, I look at it, Travis, like he's like LeBron James and you're <laughs> young Bronny. Now... You have some amazing accomplishments and doing some great things yourself, but the apple didn't fall far from the tree. But man, what you had to follow as a son to this this amazing athlete right here. I mean, you, you must be proud of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't know about uh, LeBron James or anything, but uh, yeah, I mean, if, I, <laughs> yeah, if uh, I don't know if your listeners will see this video, but, um, you know, if you look at my physique and dad's physique, we're about as far on the other end of the spectrum from LeBron James uh, as you can <laughs> possibly get. Um, but I think uh, I think we might be able to beat him at running 100 miles um, in, the, in the mountains. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've been very fortunate to just grow up, um, you know, in an active environment um, in the uh, in the mountains here in in Colorado. And, you know, dad was dad was doing those early eco challenge races. You know, that was kind of late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, like you said, Mark Burnett produced those. So I, I didn't get to go to those, but I saw dad and his buddies racing in those on on TV, as many listeners may may remember, you know, MTV, Discovery Channel, USA Network, uh, they, they got some good publicity. And, um, you know, I just kind of, I always had a thirst for this kind of stuff. I grew up playing regular sports, you know, just like every kid, I was going to be a pro soccer player, you know, if not a pro basketball player or pro road bike racer. Uh, but uh, none of those things came to fruition. Uh, but I was able to get into adventure racing, you know, at a high level after college. College. So, um, you know, I was lucky to do that. Did it, did a few, uh, OCR races here and there. We had, we had fun with those. Dad really got into those, uh, for a while. And, you know, it's been, um, it's been, it's been a good adventure and, and the, uh, you know, the, the adventure continues, the challenge continues, like you said, with, with the Alzheimer stuff. I mean, that's a, that's a huge, um, a huge challenge, uh, but, uh, you know, it's also, it's kind of, it's the next step, you know, stuff happens in, in these sports, in these races, that you just got to figure out and deal with it. And, you know, that's kind of where we're at now. Let's, let's keep dealing, keep making the most, keep, keep playing the team game, keep staying engaged with stuff like this. That's, that's huge. And, uh, and we take it one, one day at a time, or, or maybe more uh, a mile at a time, as, as we say in the, in the book that we, that we've been working on. And Mark, among all your great accomplishments, uh, none more than this kid right here, Travis, you know, when I look at all the accolades and, and all the credits that he has listed, to, you, I mean, you could roll out toilet paper of all the things that you've done, a list one there, uh, Travis, and how you are helping people also now. I mean, that's just darn good parenting right there, you know, uh, that you've taken on. So, uh, Mark, you must be proud of Travis also. Oh, sure I am. I've been proud of him for his entire life you know he's a, been a good kid and he's a good father and man he's the best yeah yeah it shows and I, have, uh, and I have to say he's a better athlete than i ever was <laughs> as well so <laughs> no question about it so so guys let's go to it because time always goes so fast when i have uh, i have these great guests like yourselves on so let's get right to the eco challenge and and the amazing story of this was that uh, I believe it was in 2018, Mark, when you were diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Tell, tell me about this, story, guys. Well, Dad, uh, what, do you, what do you you remember anything about that, Dad? Remember what you told the doctor? 
when you were first diagnosed? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's something I should put on the on the TV screen here. <laughs> you can say it here. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Embellish. <laughs> Well, he told me, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he, he told me that I should, what did you tell me, Trav? You, you remember. Well, here's what you wrote. So this is, Dad started doing some journaling right then, which I, you know, like you said, Sean, it continues to impress me that Dad is just, he's trying to help other people. He's staying engaged. So at, at that time, he started dictating some journals, um, you know, to my mom. And, and for many people with Alzheimer's, it becomes increasingly hard to, to type or to read or to write, but, um, you know, mom was ready to listen and write stuff down. And so dad's first journal, uh, started like this. Uh, this is October 16th, 2018. And dad said, my name is Mark Macy. I'm 56 years old today. And I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. My doctor, a neurologist, told me to get my affairs in order since Alzheimer's is invariably fatal. He advised me not to spend time worrying about this diagnosis, to instead take vacations, maybe go on a cruise with my wife, Pammy. I told him, this is bullshit. My wife just told me I am 64, not 56. Maybe it's not complete bullshit. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was that was kind of dad's initial reaction and, um you know we're we're putting that uh, you know it, it's uh, dad still has a sense of humor and one of the things i'm learning is is um humor is a really important tool to allow us to um access and talk around things that are things that are really hard um and that's that's dad's been uh dad's been great at that the last run dad and i did a a, uh, a half marathon together in Leadville earlier this summer, the Leadville heavy half, um, you know, pretty challenging race. You start at 10,000 feet, go up to about 13,000, come back down. And, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, dad, you want some sunscreen, right? It's like, you know, you're really exposed, hot, uh, that kind of stuff. And, and dad's like, Travis, you think I give a shit about sunscreen? I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> wow. Wow. And, and this was early on, uh, the, uh, with the diagnosis, I believe. Um, um, were there any symptoms or any inkling of this going on before you officially heard? Yeah, actually, I I had, you know, pretty good idea that something's not going on right here, you know, and I was a, was a trial lawyer and I was having trouble, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do and, and, I actually thought that I had had uh, something like, I didn't think I had Alzheimer's. I just thought I had some sort of problem and, you know, just deal with it and keep going. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and for most people, I think, well, I shouldn't say for most people, but I know how I feel and what I've seen of some people that when you get some sort of diagnosis like this or some sort of a, a news that we would say bad news like this, that it shuts you down. You know, it's almost like you just want to escape and go and isolate yourself. But you seem to have taken a different direction, you and the family. Um, uh, what was your initial feeling? Again, you, uh, we, we read what you wrote, but your initial feeling overall, did you have the moment where you felt like, uh, all right, I'm gonna just lie still, go just be, be depressed. No, under no circumstances would I do something like that. I mean, I just went along as life continued and, uh, and I wasn't really worried or anything, you know, and and I wasn't afraid and yeah, I just kept on going and I'm still going and and the same thing's true. I'm not particularly worried. I know I got Alzheimer's and and everybody says you're gonna die from my Alzheimer's and and I don't think that's the case necessarily. <laughs> I mean, I got a chance. I got a chance here. I can beat this thing, you know, and uh, I'm going to just keep at it. And my life will continue. Yeah. And if I, if I can, Sean, I'll share a little more. This is that, that same journal from that first day. Dad goes on to write, 
Uh, he says, I finished day one of my Alzheimer's diagnosis with a significant decision. I didn't cause this disease. I'm not embarrassed to be one of the millions of people suffering from it. I'm not going to hide from it. And I'm going to share our story with anyone who wants to listen. Pammy, my son, Travis, my daughters, Caitlin and Donna, and I have dedicated ourselves to fighting this horrible disease that kills people all over the world. I'm going to share our story with anyone who wants to listen and to share in our excitement when I beat this thing. And I think that was, you know, that's kind of, that's just dad's personality. That's who he is. A lot of that is, um, you know, it's, it's innate, but it's also cultivated over time through, uh, through during doing these endurance races, you know, people listening, like you go out and do an OCR race, you know, that, that, okay, there's, you know, there's the fun, there's the glory, there's the fitness, all that. But, but really where it's at is you're cultivating resilience and mental toughness that you can draw from, uh, you know, when, when you really need it, when, when there's a diagnosis, yeah. when there's, you know, really hard things that, that are going to happen in all of our lives. Uh, and dad was able to turn that corner pretty quick, you know, actually for, for me, in some ways, I think it was harder. I, that, you know, that news, I, I think for when most people receive a diagnosis like this, there's probably not as much surprise, um, because you do see, you know, the, the gradual symptoms over time and that kind of stuff, but it's still, at least for me, you know, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks, Sean. And, and it like had me stopped in my tracks and, you know, felt like, um, you know, uh, felt like my life was spinning out of control. Uh, it, it had this ripple effect where it kind of everything in my life for some period of time just felt, uh, unstable and, and very, uh, challenging. And, and I realized really soon, I need to reach out, uh, for help here from, for my family, for my friends, uh, for, from therapists, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I also realized that, that, um, I feel a lot better when I'm in it with dad in, in, you know, in the trenches as it were. And, and we decided to let's do this eco challenge together. There was a lot of uncertainty. There's definitely a significant degree of risk of going out in the jungle in Fiji for seven to 10 days when you've got this unknown fifth teammate called Alzheimer's. And, and we really, we had no idea what the hell was going to happen, but, but we knew that it was important for us to do. And, and I think uh, sometimes people think of the risks that might be involved when they go for something that they want and they fail to look at what are the risks if I don't go for it? What are the risks if I just kind of sit back here, you know, and throw in the towel and don't engage in something that's really important to, to me and my family? So we decided to go for it. We Again, we knew there was uncertainty, but we also knew we had a great team. Uh, our, our teammates, uh, Shane and Danelle, our, our uh, assistance crew, Andrew, I mean, we're all experienced. We know what we're doing and we, we knew that we could keep each other safe and, and make the most of it. See, now, this makes me think, um, you know, okay, one, you had the opportunity to have your own team and, and compete in this, and you guys chose to go together as one team. And when I hear this, this story well, uh, in, every, in, in a lot of lives uh, where our parents or a parent has a diagnosis like this, whether it be this, cancer, something similar, and... And in my, I think about myself, you know, my, my father's past, my mom is still alive and my mom's the world to me, you know, and she's 84. She just went into the hospital for to get some checkups and some, some stuff removed and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And, and man, you, you kind of, you, even though you hear it in your head, you, you kind of just feel for granted, they're always going to be there yeah. and that yeah. there's always that safety orb around you. Yeah. That is your parents. You yeah. know, you have a great quote in here uh, where you said it's part of the circle of life that one day the child will become the caregiver. And even, even in that uh, uh, being the caregiver, it's still there. You're to me, they feel like my still safety in Absolutely. this world, my umbrella, my foundation yeah. when I fall. I said, but when you get, again, you, you said it a little bit, and fortunately, it seems like you have a great family as a support system. This affects the family, you know, yeah. uh, uh, honestly, in your heart. Yeah. When you oh. first heard this. What, what happened? What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, all of the, you know, we talk about the 
the stages of, of grief. And what I've learned is, you know, rather than thinking of these stages, like, Oh, you know, stage one is done. Now I'm in two. Now I'm in three, uh, especially when I've, I've heard, uh, you know, cognitive decline dis- described as what they call ambiguous loss. So it's this, it's a different type of loss. It's happening over time. And I've learned that, that at least for me, you know, these different stages of grief, these different e- emotions of sadness, uh, anger, denial, acceptance, et cetera, they, 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 they come in waves, you know, in and out, up and down. And, and especially for me, kind of that first, you know, let's say six months or so. Um, I mean, the, the, yeah, the emotions were overrunning me. I mean, I mean, I, you know, anxiety, depression, panic attacks. Um, it was, it was really, really hard. And, and Sean, I know what you're saying. I mean, you know, especially those of us who, who had a great childhood, who have very close relationships with our parents, you, you're, you're right. Uh, you know, we, we do expect changes over time. Um, for me, the initial sense, you know, this diagnosis, dad was 64 and I was 35 and, I was an adult, you know, I have kids, I have a house, I have, you know, a job, all that kind of stuff. But but the initial sense was I am not ready for this. I'm not ready to take on, you know, this new leadership role that really that I know that I'm going to need uh to take here. You know, I I I knew that uh you know that we we're, we're going to have to um, you know, again, step up, step up to the plate and 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 really uh be you know, when I think back on it, I, I had to be a real adult. I thought I was a grown up and I realized with this, like, well, growing up, it, it comes to a whole new level here. And it, you know, it, it took time. I'm still easing into that. I'm still having these moments of, of sadness or overwhelm or, you know, anxiety about the future, which, which is uncertain. Uh, but I'm, I'm feeling, you know, a bit more at ease with it. And honestly, doing doing that world's toughest race together for, for me, um, it kind of became this sort of rite of passage that, that, you know, I imagine in my head, this is showing me that I'm, I'm ready for this, ready for this new role. And I think also for dad, you know, this is another challenge for many people as we age, we have to be more comfortable with accepting help. And that's going to look like different things in the different areas. But especially I think for, you know, a, a lot of a lot of men, men of dad's generation, men who, you know, have been super independent and you've been a strong athlete and, you know, you go out and you, you know, you drive all over the place and you, you know, you know take life by the reins. Um, it's hard to to accept help. And that's another thing that's impressed me about dad is, is he just keeps going, you know, kind of as fast as he can, but also as slow as he must and making the most of everything. You know, I mean, for years, dad's lifestyle was to get in his truck and drive wherever he wanted and go running and mountain biking, you know, on mountain peaks and technical trails and, you know, all that. And he can't drive anymore. And that's really hard. But he can still get out from his house and go for a run or get picked up, you know, by by his buddy Marshall, who, you know, can still drive. And once they're once they're out on the trails, man, they're just a couple old dudes hanging out and BSing and running along, you know, like anyone else would. They're doing their thing. Yeah, Mark, uh, let me get, get it from your perspective because you're a man's man. You know, you're 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 the guy. You know, when we look up a man in the in the dictionary, the, your picture's <laughs> up there with everyone else's. There, you know, it's dad, and, dad, and LeBron, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, you should arm and, wrestle LeBron, Dad. <laughs> not, not, not even close to LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like you said, uh, in, in your sport, you, you, you'd murder the guy. You'd, you'd kill him. But um, th- it's so easy for us as men too that we don't want to be a burden to anyone, especially to the, our loved ones around us. Mark, do you have any of that feeling of, of, of being a burden? Any of that concern? No, I don't. Good. <laughs> Maybe Good. I should. No. Maybe I should. I never thought of it. You know, we've no. got we've got a good family. You know, we had, our family's got about 16 little kids in it. And, you know, there's a bunch of us. And, you know, I just go through life with, with the family and everything's good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And dad, and dad really does. You know, one of the things we talk about in the in the book is the importance of staying engaged and helping, you know, helping people do that as as they age or, you know, disease, illness, whatever. 
but that engagement is so important. And, and whatever our, you know, dad's thing is getting out and exercising and this other thing is family and especially his kids and grandkids. I mean, he's just as proud of, of my sister's and of the foster kids that mom and dad raised as, as he is of me. And, you know, he's probably even more proud of his grandkids, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, having that time um, working creatively as a family unit to set up uh, the appropriate ways of interacting and, and all that um, that's, that's huge, you know, and, and again, the engagement, it may look different, you know, maybe you're not running the Leadville 100 race or doing the Spartan world champs anymore, but you know, for us this year, going out and doing the Leadville heavy half, that was a good, big challenge. And, and that was enough. And we can both be super happy with it. Now, this was early on again, before you guys uh, uh, actually started doing, did the Eagle challenge and you decided, okay, we're going to go as a team. You, you have experience at this kind of thing. What changes in your preparation now? What's in going through, what's your mindset now before you get out there? You know, dad, physically, dad put in more training time than any of the rest of us. Uh, you know, me, me, Shane, Danelle, our other two, you know, we all have uh, relatively young kids and and work going on. So we're kind of balancing all this. Uh, there's a lot of logistical planning for those races. Um, you know, some people like joke that it's like the, the equipment challenge, uh, you, you have to have all of this stuff. And so, you know, reading emails and looking at spreadsheets with all this gear and checklists and that kind of stuff. I mean, that's not in anyone's wheelhouse when they have Alzheimer's, but, uh, dad could go out and, and run and bike. And so he was doing all that, you know, I was kind of, you know, taking up a little slack in, in the organization and stuff. Um, dad, dad put in a ton of time, uh, for example, the, these adventure races, they usually have uh, fixed ropes challenges. So you're rappelling or ascending fixed ropes, maybe tie rolling traverses, that kind of stuff. And uh, dad had done a lot of rock climbing in the past. So this is previously a big interest of his, something he was really good at. And, and with Alzheimer's, it became very, very hard to, you know, just put on and take off a climbing harness correctly and to, you know, utilize carabiners. Uh, you know, it's this kind of visual spatial uh, challenges. And man, dad put in like no joke, he would spend an hour almost every day working on that exact stuff, put on the harness, take it back off, um, you know, really working on his strengths, which were you know, running and biking uphill, but also working on, on those areas of challenge. And um, we also, you know, like I said, I had a lot of anxiety of, you know, what are we getting into here? What's going to happen? You know, what are the risks? And I just kind of had to realize, like, there's a lot of uncertainty and I've got to accept that uncertainty and we're going to make the most of it, you know, as, as things come out there. Um, and again, I, I've got a great team around me. Uh, you know, dad's still contributing to the team. He's, he's had an energy and fun and encouragement. I mean, once we got out there, we had a blast. I mean, I, I bet I'm sure we laughed more than just about any other team out there, huh, dad? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me the name of the team. And I know we can go, we can all go and see this again, uh, which, which, which this is, makes it even more exciting. I want to go and check it out again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, tell me about your teammates again. Yeah. So, um, the, the, like you said, the show is still on Amazon prime. It's called world's toughest race. Um, we were called team endure. And so it was dad and I, uh, with, um, Shane Siegel and Danelle Ballinger and our crew guy was Andrew Spears. And, um, yeah, it was a, it was a great makeup and, you know, they didn't on the coverage, they didn't show Danelle's story as much, uh, which I think they should have, um, you know, Danelle was, I always tell people Danelle is the, the, best and most accomplished athlete you've probably never heard of because, you know, man, in the nineties and two thousand, she was winning anything and everything in endurance sports. And she probably would have gotten into OCR had it been around. Cause I mean, triathlon running, uh, you know, races like the Mount Taylor quadrathlon where you, uh, run road bike, ski and snowshoe, you know, adventure races. Anyway, she was, she was a fantastic pro athlete. And then, uh, in the mid 2000s, she had a near death accident um, where she basically fell off a cliff outside of Moab, survived for uh, oh. two nights out in the winter. Um, her dog, you should have her on the podcast. In fact, yeah, um, now that you're saying her, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Her dog, her dog rescued her. People can Google. Um, it's a show. I think it's called I Shouldn't Be Alive. And they do these, you know, kind of recreations of 
various compelling stories and they did one on her, but, but her dog Taz, you know, basically saved her life. And so anyway, this, this was um, also Danelle's first like real big race back since that near death uh, accident. So in, in many ways, um, you know, the, if there's an uh, quote, endure spirit, you know, and Nellie was leading the way uh, with that as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to find her get her yep. on here too yep. yeah i do man she's she's one of the toughest people i've ever known in my life you know she's yep yep yeah it sounds like a great team were there any more frustrations from uh the symptoms that you guys were experiencing that you were experiencing mark with with alzheimer's that frustrated you out there while you're uh, you, you, during the competition you know i don't recall it um, uh, maybe I had some, but, uh, you know, I don't recall being anything other than having a great time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and maybe, uh, you know, I might, I might put it more as, as challenges, uh, you know, not frustrations, like, yeah. uh, you know, faced with the challenge, we have a choice. Do we think this is a frustration or do we think this is something we just got to figure out? And so there were definitely, challenges and there was uh you remember on the second night out there dad um uh, dad had kind of somehow gotten in his mind that Danelle and I were like illegally renting out uh <laughs> sleeping spaces so we were all sleeping in this it, it was a disorienting situation middle of the night you know Fiji there's all these different languages going on and now we can laugh about it because dad actually remembered it but uh dad had thought that that Danelle were and I were running this kind of underground scheme to rent out sleeping spaces in this Fijian schoolhouse you know where we were kind of all hunkered down and um you know in the moment it was it was very concerning to me and I basically had you know told myself like okay well we're gonna go to sleep and you know we know that sleep is is good sleep sets things back on track and we'll see what things are like in the morning and thankfully in the morning it was fine we were all cracking up about it when we woke up in the morning huh dad <laughs> I got it I guess I guess I made a mistake <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue where we were, you know, not Fiji or anything. I had, I had no idea where we were. Yeah. yeah. God, and, and most good. of the time you were dialed in though, dad, and very engaged. You know, we, we also re we realized through creativity and experience, mm -hmm. Hey, if, if dad's talking, if he's in conversation and especially if we can just limit time moving and being awake when it's dark out, um, you know, the daytimes would be, be pretty good. And we, we've, we've, you know, we, uh, took on roles as a team doing that, you know, usually as it, as it got dark, you know, Shane and I would kind of be reading the maps and dad and Anel kind of became this mini team and they just walk along talking, telling stories, you know, laughing, joking, being, being friends. And, and that, that kept, uh, kept dad engaged and it was, it really was fun. Where are you guys now with uh, Alzheimer's? And Mark, do you can you remember any highlights of uh, of you guys uh, at the Eco Challenge? Oh, uh, yeah, I probably do. You know, that was most you know the big part of it was just great. It was great fun, and we were all over the place. We were riding, you know. Boogie boards, you know, over the, you know, for, for a hundred miles or, you know, and it was all, it was all good stuff. Everything was good. Yeah. yeah. And dad's been able to, um, you know, he, dad's been the world's biggest eco challenge, you know, fan from the start. So dad will go, dad will watch it, you know, and he's, he's riding the indoor bike or, you know, uh, just hanging out during the day. So I think, I think that's great. And, and he also, um, you know, I guess an interesting thing about this book writing experience is, you know, dad's been a huge piece of the writing from the start with all these journals and stuff, but writing a book also does, it takes forever. It's really hard to get a publisher. You know, this process has gone on and on. And more recently, um, dad's had a, a, a local friend who's been coming over and, and reading the book with, with dad. And that's been, you know, kind of neat. He gets to experience it anew, whether it's uh, stories from the Eco Challenge or other things that we've 
we've put in the book. So, you know, it's possible to bring those things back and to, uh, you know, sometimes when the grandkids come over, dad will, dad will watch eco challenge with them or look at old photos. I mean, it's a great way, um, to, to get to share it with them. You know, I, I was reading how, how, Mark, how you are one of the few people that finished all eight of the eco challenges uh, held from 1995 to 2002. And it sounds like you're still active out there. How does being active, how does that affect the disease, the symptoms of the disease, the oncoming of the disease? Does it help? Does it hinder? Do you find yourself getting tired and, and then uh, more disoriented or whatever it may be that you're going through right now? No, I'm basically the same. You know, my... Mm -hmm. My ability to run and bike and anything else, uh, you know, I can I'm still can do anything I want to do. I'm yeah. Not at all. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm perfect because <laughs> I'm not perfect. That's for sure. You got Alzheimer's. You're not perfect, but <laughs> everything's working out well. And, and like you said, yeah. Everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, Sean, you know, back to that engagement with something familiar, you know, you can imagine for someone with, with Alzheimer's or other cognitive decline, you know, things in daily life can and do get more challenging, you know, things with numbers and schedules and, you know, what do we do yesterday? What do we, you know, all, all that kind of stuff, it, it does get more challenging, and we found, you know, when you get in that good familiar environment, and in this case for dad, that's an environment of being outside, being in nature, being in motion, things are good and simple. And, and that, uh, like the race that we did this year at Leadville, you know, there was some just anxiety and uncertainty going into it of, you know, where's the course, when is it happening, how far, you know, those kind of things. But man, dude, when the gun went off, like, we're just going, you know, we're trekking along and like, this is familiar. This is it. Like you're, you're at altitude, you're pushing yourself. You're out there with other, other runners. You're part of the community. Um, you know, it was, it was great. Things honestly are, are simpler and most, uh, comfortable at those moments. Um, and we've also, you know, we've adapted like, you know, the, dad's running races the last couple of years I've done with him. Cause again, it's hard to track time. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when, when do you eat, when do you drink, uh, you know, when do you, whatever, change clothes, put on the rain jacket, that kind of stuff, even staying on course, you know, it, it can help to have someone along for that. And, and I've really enjoyed it. You know, I mean, I spent most of my racing career, like, you know, man, we're, we're going for, you know, podium or money, you know, the, the sponsorship, that kind of stuff. I found that, that, you know, and maybe this is just, I'm getting older and slower myself, but like, boy, there's a great purpose, you know, when it's something outside yourself. And I'm sure that many people in the OCR community and beyond can relate to that. You know, you do it as a team, you do it as a fundraiser, you, you know, you, when you're doing it for someone else, um, man, it's, it's way better than doing it for yourself. Yeah, I had asked Mark, Travis, any highlights that you can share with us that you remember from the Eco Challenge? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, many. Just the, again, the overall experience, the fun, uh, the river rafting was was incredible. We were in this narrow canyon with, you know, steep limestone walls and it had just rained and there's waterfalls coming down these walls and there's birds flying around and the sun. I mean, just like a, you know, a, a tropical island paradise mixed with some neat technical challenging uh river travel uh so that was great and, and then another one um man the fijian people are just the best of of anyone i've met anywhere in the world they have this uh the spirit this saying they say bula 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 and and bula it's it's kind of like a you know, Pura Vida in Costa Rica or Aloha in Hawaii. It's, it's this, uh, this spirit of enthusiasm and togetherness and community. And, and you can tell that, you know, it's, it's not for sure. Like this is, this is how, how they live. And especially these, these, you know, small rural villages, uh, the lifestyle is very communal. It's very much intertwined. And uh, we got to, you know, most of the nights we were sleeping in people's houses and just having these really wow. cool, personal experiences uh one night like uh you know and they're the the people who live there they're in the house you know small 
concrete structure with a bamboo floor mat. And one night, um, Danelle woke up in the middle of the night and she was sleeping on her side and there's a little kid just curled up, you know, next to her. And like, <laughs> you know, I think if you ask her, that was probably one of her highlights of the race. Cause it, for me, it's like, wow, there's this, you get a sense of this, just this spirit of interconnectedness and goodness, um, you know, around the world. It was, it was really fantastic. Yeah, I imagine you're dealing with the elements there too, because we don't think about that part, you know, when we're sitting here comfortable in our in our house and we're watching you guys out there. But insects and the the weather and and it, maybe it's all wet all the time. I mean, we don't think about that stuff. How much does that play a part in the challenge? Oh, it's huge. I mean, in in Fiji, basically, you're either way too hot or way too cold. And there's hardly any in between. And the cold, you know, might surprise some people. But, you know, you get into the the jungles at higher altitude, three or 4000 feet, and it's raining and you're you're in and out of cold water. Um, The cold is a is a huge challenge. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge, huge piece of the sport. Did the production people have to travel with you guys? Because I used to host a, a, a mm-hmm. travel show and the guy that was working our camera, there was a lady also, both of them, yep. our camera people, they would do some stuff that I wouldn't do. And they're yeah. carrying either a camera or whatever it is that they had. Did you yep. guys have, did you have that with the production? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I was mic'd up the whole time. I had this kind of necklace thing, you know, basically with a microphone on it and a little battery that I would store in the backpack or something. Uh, and, and then, yes, they did have many photographers stationed around the course. They had photographers on the ropes. They had helicopters. I mean, the scope of this production is is incredible and uh, there were many embedded photographers as well so we had a, a guy named johan from germany and johan basically became part of our team you know he we couldn't take food from him or you know ask him where to go or anything but i mean you know he, he all of the foot sections in the race which could be you know up to 24 or more hours in a row man he was right with us trekking along and we're talking and you know getting to know him and about his family and his work and all that and you know that that was another uh another layer of just uh fun and connectedness do either of you guys because you've had so much experience in this stuff do either of you guys still even still not just the eco but you're out there doing stuff and you think to yourself this is crazy do you have that feeling anymore? <laughs> I do sometimes. Do you, do you ever have that feeling, Dad, that kind of wondering why you got into it? Uh, not that I can think of right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I do. I wouldn't say overwhelmingly so, Sean. Often it's more, you know, in advance, like there's fear, there's, there's anxiety, like there's uncertainty. And I, I always tell, you know, I'm, most of my day job is coaching adult endurance athletes. I tell people when you're feeling those things before the race, that's good. That is a sign that you are pushing yourself, that you're doing something uncomfortable and that no matter what happens out there, you're, you're going to learn something and, and you've got to learn how to navigate uh, that fear. And, and, and again, the, the butterflies, the uncertainty, the not knowing what's going to happen, right? That's why you, that's why it's called a race. If you knew what was going to happen, you wouldn't have, uh, a a race. And so, uh, yeah, I do, you know, again, maybe at moments, uh, you know, out there more and more, I mean, now that, you know, I just getting older myself and, you know, you, you have kids who you're responsible for, you know, more and more, I know that if, if I am having a feeling where there is a safety concern, you know, I react to that quickly and change the situation by, you know, whatever it is, removing myself, not, not ascending higher, moving away from the lightning, you know, getting off my bike to walk the technical section, whatever, whatever it may be. You know, uh, I think in your counseling and what I've read from you, uh, mindset one, uh, I, I believe I should have seen mindset, but one of the things I always tell the mothers uh, at the event when they're there, I'm like, uh, I know you guys are here to have fun, and and uh, a lot of you are fit. You know, you're going out there to you know to challenge that fitness, see where you're at with that. Uh, but there's this underlying thing, this innate um, exercising of our survival skills mm-hmm. uh, uh, and just surviving. That man, when you exhaust yourself and take on these challenges and you get to that threshold where your physical, your mental, even your spiritual are all working together. 
Woo, that's a great feeling. It's addictive. You know, do yeah. you guys, are, are, is that oh, the drive? Yeah. Are you still getting that? Both of you, either of I you? I do. Yeah, it's a big, that's a huge piece of my daily experience, Sean, whether it's with the races or or with the training or just, you know, that relation to um, humans are made to be physical in the world, to be outside, to do stuff with other humans, to do things with animals, to move you know, to navigate the landscape. Like that's, that's what humans should do. There's a great book called Sapiens about the history of mankind. And we see in that book, you know, that humanity has a history of, you know, 50,000 years and probably more. And the vast majority of that people were, you know, living in small groups and they were moving around, they were active, they were, they were physical. Uh, They, you know, they weren't sitting here uh, talking on a video call, that's for sure. And, and I think whether, whether it's Tough Mudder or a different OCR race or the Eco Challenge or, you know, this sport that I've gotten into, it's called pack burrow racing, this crazy thing where you run around and everyone has a burrow on a lead and you run through the mountains. You know, these are, these are, Prime, the reason that people like this is because it's, you know, I think we're hardwired to to do that, to move around, to be physical. And, and that's why it feels good. And, and you know, depending on what your life has been so far, at first, it, it may very well feel uncomfortable and you might not like getting dirty or, you know, getting sore or tired or breathing hard or whatever. But you, you keep easing in. You keep pushing yourself, you know, find your own world's toughest race. And then you just kind of keep, keep upping it. And, and yeah, you can absolutely keep getting that feeling. Mark is the drive there still for (laughs) adventure and is the appreciation and the satisfaction feeling, is that still there and uh, for you? Sure. It is. You know, we've done, Travis told you, we've done a couple of big, big races in, in the last six months or whatever it is. And, you know, I still still go for it, and, and you know, I run every day and much of the time, twice a day, and I'm um, I'm not ever going to stop doing that stuff, man. That's that's what I do, and I'm going to do it forever. Yeah, it seems like yeah, whatever your challenge is in your life, you know, to whoever might be listening, that again, like you're saying, Travis, engage, don't disengage with life even more so get out there and live. I mean, what is your message to, to people out there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. would agree. And, and, oh, you want to go ahead, Dad? No, message. I was going to say, my, well, you know, I don't want to get back into the Alzheimer's stuff necessarily, but, you know, I think what is important and, and, uh, is to just keep at it and don't quit and don't ever quit what it is you do or what you need to do or or anything else. I mean, you just you just got to keep at it and you know go for as long as as you can. Yeah, yeah. Dad, Dad's got a uh, Dad got his first tattoo at age sixty seven. On his on his arm there. You remember what it says, Dad? Do you want to read it out loud? It's all good training. Oh yeah, I saw that on on uh, online. It's all good training. Well, yeah. elaborate on that for me. Well, everything you do is got is good training. You just, especially when you got Alzheimer's. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah yeah dad's always been a man of, of many mantras whether it, it's all good training or keep the faith uh you know hang tough like uh those kind of dad used to say those things he, he still does uh but uh you know i think we in some ways kind of realized one of the things that we've been training for at, at least for our family and we're glad that we have that training and and glad that we can, um, you know, maybe my, if I was going to give a single message or or two, one would be keep the faith and whatever that means to you. You know, for me, that, that starts with faith in yourself that even though things are really hard, even though I might be having a bad day, even though I might be feeling anxious or depressed, I know it can get better. And I know I've been through hard things before and I can persevere through this. And 
uh, you know, keep the faith. Some some people, may, hey, maybe that's a religious thing or a spiritual thing or however you want to believe it. You know, you gotta you gotta have faith uh, faith in something. Um, and then the other thing I would I would leave people with maybe is just um, as fast as we can and as slow as we must. And and it's just a good way to you know push push push. Yeah, go hard, but you also have to accept things as they are and uh, you know deal deal with life uh, as it is. There's a lot of um, we've learned a lot about Alzheimer's and dementia, all those. And um, I believe there's organizations out there uh, who you guys are you working with anyone in particular? Well, I don't you've think done so. a lot with the Alzheimer's Association, right, Dad? That's kind of the well, you know, you're the, right. You're right. Yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> yeah. Cool. What do you know? <laughs> but that, yeah, the Alzheimer's, they've been huge i think especially for mom and dad and we got to give a shout out to to my mom as well you know she mom and dad lived together and i mean man talk about uh resilience and creativity and just endless energy and giving i mean that's that's my mom right there but the alzheimer's uh association in the denver area where mom and dad are has created a great community and that's another thing i would say to people when you're going through something tough Often it feels like you're alone and you might feel isolated, but um, you're not. And, and whether that's through something like this, uh, maybe it's through actually meeting up with people. Maybe there's, a again, a community uh, in, in your area of people going through the same stuff. Um, I think that's, that's really important. Um, and a, another one that we've uh, partnered with a bit is called Mind What Matters. And that's a, another nonprofit uh, that supports uh, the next generation of Alzheimer's caregivers. So they uh, raise funds and then give grants to individuals and families, you know, often who, when I step back, I'm like, man, you know, our family, like we've got a great family. We are so fortunate to have money to handle things, whether it's the house or, you know, this or that, um, you know, the mind what matters, man, they're giving, they're giving caregivers money to go buy a washing machine or, you know, or, uh, you know, something that allows the caregiver to have an extra one hour of their own things like that. Um, so that's, you know, that's really important. I would recommend checking them out. Travis, uh, you authored the book, a mile at a time. Uh, tell me about the title. Yeah, like I said, Sean, a mile at a time. I mean, you know, it's just that idea. Like, you know, you're, I, I, looking back, like I said, that initial Alzheimer's diagnosis, you know, for me, in hindsight, one of the challenges is I was getting too far into future hypotheticals um, and trying to, un trying to control everything at once, whether it's, you know, finances and long term care and, uh, you know, l legal stuff, just, overwhelmed by, you know, what, what may come without enough of just be present. That's something that the dad has shown me that other people with, with, uh, you know, Alzheimer's and cognitive decline, like, again, the, t the timing gets challenging. It's hard to know what's the plan for tomorrow or what did you do yesterday, but man, here you are, you know, us three, we're talking here. This is the present and you got to make the most of that present moment. And that's a lot of what the, the title a mile at a time is just, you know, we're, we're be present, you know, one mile at a time, stay together as, as a team. And, you know, you're, you're thinking about the future, you're planning ahead, but you're also, you're doing your best, uh, you know, where you are at that moment. Uh, your website, travismacy.com. Again, I went on there. I always go on everybody's website. Yeah, uh, I went on yours, Sean. You were on Friends, <laughs> man. I'm going to go watch that episode. I have never met anyone who was on the Friends TV show, dude. Yeah, great experience, <laughs> man. I, I, I like it too. If you're a, um, a sessions musician, that you got to sit in with the Beatles for a, yeah, a, a yeah. one session. That's what yeah. it was like. It was a great yeah. experience. There you go, everyone. Check out Sean's website. I think it's linked. Oh, nice. I didn't have, yeah. You remember that show, Friends, Dad? I don't know if Dad was ever sure. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> They're still running it. Uh, you have a podcast also, the yeah. Travis Macy Show. Uh, I'm, again, everybody, please go on there, check it out, find this man. He's got a lot of wisdom that he's sharing, a lot of love that you guys are sharing, and a story that's, that's part of life, man, what you guys are going through. A lot of times we get, again, people that go through this stuff, they feel 
they need to be isolated from it. And I think you guys yep. show just the opposite here. You know, once again, engage, get out there, live, you yeah. know, uh, Mark, any, uh, anything you'd like to say to anyone that has just, uh, uh, or even fears that they may have this Alzheimer's coming on any advice? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that if if you can feel this coming on, uh, and if you have some good reason to believe it's the case, you know, get to somebody like the Alzheimer's Association in Colorado, and don't just be scared and going on and don't do anything. You know, I mean, I. I don't know how long it took me to, you know, learn that I actually had Alzheimer's for sure. Because I knew, I think I said this earlier, I don't want to keep retreating or repeating myself, but I knew that there was something wrong and, uh, and I should have done something earlier and, and maybe things would have been different. But, you know, Again, don't if if you think that you've got Alzheimer's, go to somebody in some organization that knows how to how to take care of people and 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 do what they say or do what they advise. And you know what? Give me a call anytime you want because it's not that bad. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a happy guy. I got a great wife. My my wife Pam is as good as you can get. And my kids are great, and I'm you know I can still run, I can still bike, I can still do anything, and I ain't quitting. So just 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 get get after it and get yourself on the way and take care of yourself. Travis, your advice for family members or anyone out there supporting a loved one that's going through this challenge, uh, what yeah. would you say to them? I don't know if I can say it any better than the dad just did, but yeah, hang, hang together. It's a, uh, you know, adventure racing is a team sport in many cases, uh, tough mutter and other OCRs, the team may or may not be official, but people help re- each other out. Like that's part of the great ethic of it. And the reason I like these, these team environments is because life is a team sport as well. And and you've got to focus on that team. And you can also, you know, to the extent that's possible, you can pick your team. You know, if, if you're working with, you know, medical uh, personnel or something that, that, you know, for some reason, aren't giving you the, the right vibe or, or whatever, you know, pursue that and find, find other options. Um, I, I know how hard and how, how draining that is. Um, I do think dad also gave some good advice. You know, traditionally there's, there's, you know, there's been these stigmas with, with cognitive decline. One of them is no treatment, no cure. And if that's the truth, you know, the, the next story is why do you even want to know? And I think that's changing. I think that's different. You know, new treatments are becoming available. We're learning these things, whether it's new medications or or lifestyle and diet and other things that can be done to make a difference. So like, like that said, you know, if, if you're concerned, whether it's for you or someone you care about, um, initiate that hard conversation. And boy, is that a hard conversation to have, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. But, but you got to do it. You got to, I can't tell you how to do it because it's going to be different for everyone. And sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it's a lot of little conversations that, you know, finally add up, but um, get to the point where you're seeking professional medical uh, support and diagnosis as soon as possible, because there are now things uh, that can be done earlier on. And again, there's still, you know, there's still no cure, but more and more that can be done, that maybe you're slowing the progression of the disease. And, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, I mean, m- mom and dad do a lot with, with diet, you know, a mo- kind of a mod- uh, modified Mediterranean diet and uh, being active. I think that's huge. That's good for your brain. It's good for your body. Like, you know, do these things, they can absolutely, you know, as athletes, we think about what are a bunch of little things that I can do that each one, you know, gives me uh, an extra 1% and that adds up. 
to make a difference. Well, it's the same with with your overall health and with, in this case, uh, slowing cognitive decline. Yeah. And certainly you guys show that you can have a quality life, man. You can just suck the quality mirror out of yeah, life. I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I do, I mean, Sean, you know, like we're, dad and I are positive guys in our, our book, like you said, a mile at a time, most of it is meant to be positive and, and inspirational. And we're working hard on, you know, getting it out there because we think it can help. Like, that's why you're, you don't write a book to get rich. You do it because you think it can help people. Um, but I, I don't want to like brush over the challenge, the sadness, you know, the suffering, the it's, it's really, really hard. And I tried to, you know, I tried to be honest that, about that in the book, you, you know, when, when I find my, found myself doing and thinking things, you know, that are, that are not myself, it, it, it is hard and it continues to be hard. You know, I'm better at catching myself now when I get sucked into those future hypotheticals, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's still, it's still damn hard. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning as I get older, like, you know, everything's not good or bad. <laughs> there's a gray area. There's a lot of things that, you know, there's, there's good and bad and, and you're, you're making the most of it. Yeah. Life pure to me though, it's um, sure we can say good and bad, but it's, it's life. Yeah, and there you go. there's there's beauty, good and bad. There's yeah. beauty there that, yeah. that uh, you find in yourself, you know, and that you yeah. get to connect with out there. Yeah. And and that's certainly what you guys are doing, I believe. Uh, real quick, before I get you guys out of here, uh, I, you're a Spartan guy, right? Have you done a Tough Mudder? I've never, I don't know. I don't know if either of us ever have. We both, dad started a bunch of Spartans. Like we said, he did that one world championship. I think it was 2015 or 16, like in Tahoe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if either of us have ever actually done a tough mutter. Yeah. I don't think I have. Yeah, we got made not, not, to... Well, it wasn't because we don't like him or anything. <laughs> of I just, course, of course. I, yeah. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, hey, we, you you guys blazed that trail for uh, Tough Mudders. So, yeah, so yeah. Uh, it'd be awesome. We have to get you guys out at, at, at an event, even a world toughest mudder challenge, mm. our 24 hours. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've thought like, about that. I've, I've never done it, but I do, you know, some of those, uh, you know, Ryan Atkins and some of these other athletes, I just kind of know from here and there. But yeah, I mean, I tell you what, Sean, world's toughest mudder, like that thing is the real deal. That is physically and mentally you know, as hard as any 24 hour adventure mm -hmm. race or, you know, mountain bike race or whatever, like that is in, in what seeing what the top athletes do, the distance covered in 24 hours with obstacles, you know, I mean, these really are some of the world's fittest people. And I think you guys would be perfect, both you and your dad out there, because World Toughest Mudder, like you said, great competition. Uh, we get some of the top athletes in in the OCR world. You mentioned Ryan. Ryan, to me, is one of those guys that uh, he was one of the first people that I saw as far as elite athletes that really took on that essence of what Tough Mudder is about, where yeah. the guy that he's in competition with is right there and he's helping him over an obstacle with yeah. him. Yep. You know, yeah. and when you if you it. ever go if you ever go to one of those World Toughest Mudder events, You'll see because you bring your own tent, your own pit yeah. area. You're just doing the laps many times you can, but you got your people there, your support system, yep. just yep. like in life. And not just them, everyone is looking out for one another. You yep. know, so I would love to see uh, if you guys ever get a chance to come on out and, and participate in that. I think you're perfect. You're the oh, thanks, perfect man. ambassadors cool. for that. Yes. You know, what do you do? You just got to go and sign up and get to go. You can talk to me, man. I'll get you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you, if you really like it, Dad, you can run around in a wetsuit for, you know, many hours. Many hours. <laughs> That's yes. we've, we've done that in adventure races before, man. Oh, geez. Nothing like running, nothing like running around in a wetsuit all night long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, overall experience of it, it's it's got all those great things in life that you just love that you guys are doing right now. Okay. Right. So. I, cause I, again, I can, Travis, I can talk to you guys forever, man. <laughs> <laughs> we could, we could do it, man. Thanks. I, I, I'm, I'm just full of life right now. I feel so yep. great. Thank you for yep. that. Uh, I never let my guests get out of here without asking them my two questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is a quote that was passed down to me by one of our legionnaires, a gentleman named Craig. I got to visit Craig in the hospital just before he passed away of cancer. 
And he told me when he was diagnosed, he started living by this quote that became a model for him. And it became a model for me. I took it back to Mother Nation. And over the years, they made it so popular, it actually became a song by the artist Darius Rucker, who we used mm. to know with Hootie and the Blow Blowfish, a great song. Uh, so I asked this of all my guests. The quote is, when was the last time you did something for the first time? So I'll ask you both. When was the last time you did something for the first time? When was it and what was it? Can you remember anything, Dad? Like a new a new thing that you that you tried or you did? Man. I got Alzheimer's, man. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, that's a great answer, Dad. But Dad, he's always trying. He's, he's also, you know, he's pushing himself in doing things that, that are a little bit uncomfortable. And we think that's really important. I think that, all, you know, again, I am not a doctor by any means, but I think pushing that limit a little bit of what is comfortable, you know, whether again, for dad, it might be, you know, going on dad's visual spatial challenges. Like he gets on these trails that he's been running on forever. And it looks to him like it's a deadly cliff, you know, it's a, it's a hill. And if you fell, you know, you might, you know, fall down, but it looks like it's a deadly cliff. And, and, you know, dad is still pushing himself on that to, you know, push that limit to, to remain, a bit comfortable. So, um, yeah, that's, that's one of them. I mean, I, I love, I love doing new stuff all the time as well. For me, the, the biggest, as far as like an actual significant endeavor, um, about a year ago, I started this sport of, of pack burrow racing again, high altitude running race. You got a donkey on a leash and, uh, I've been wanting to do it for a long time. I, I, you know, I've had dogs my whole life, but I don't have any experience with horses or anything like that. And I, you know, I, I said, man, this is, this is the year, man, I'm doing it. And I just got out there, found a donkey and started running and boy, is it a good sport. That's awesome, man. Uh, you know, the beauty of it, uh, uh, again, of that quote, and I'm sure you know this, Travis, it's, I think it's in your message also, is that when you're taking on these new things, that's what it's about. And, yeah. and, yep. and, and as much as it's great, you know, the thrill of the physical of that, the real important part of that is taking on that feeling of the unknown yeah. yep. uh, of something you're not. And I think that your dad's been doing that all his life, which is why what taking on this challenge that he's going through now he's just so awesome at it yeah and he's yeah just out and there i mean maybe this is a bit of of a riff but i mean when you have alzheimer's you're doing new things every day yeah you know i yeah. mean seriously like there's a lot of you know dad and i were talking on the phone this morning and we're joking around these these damn zippers you know they don't work like they used to huh dad and like you gotta <laughs> you know you gotta figure it out or, or the seat the seat belt in a in a vehicle right you sit in a vehicle you know, and sometimes maybe it looks familiar and sometimes it's like, you know, God, I've never seen one of these things in my life. Right. So yeah. you're, you know, I mean, talk about having to push yourself to do new stuff. Like, man, welcome yeah. to, welcome yeah. to and, dad's world. And, and again, to me, he's like the Serena Williams, the LeBron James of, of these people that are out there, almost like a superhero that has it on tap to go, to take on fears, to take on uncomfortable feelings, you know, yep. and, you know, that's uh, Mark, you're, for me, you're a superhero at that stuff. Um, so let's go. My final question to you guys. All right. So you're, you're both out there doing your adventurous thing, hiking, running, whatever y'all doing that you, you might say, oh, how did I get into this crazy thing? And you come across that lamp on the ground. You pick up the lamp and do what everybody does with the lamp. You wipe it off. Out pops me, the genie in the lamp. Been in there for millions and trillions of centuries. I am so happy that you finally freed me. That Mark, Travis, I'm not going to give you guys three wishes. I'm going to give you the ultimate gift. In this moment, I am going to give you the undivided attention of the world. In this moment, the world stops what it's doing. Everybody in there, wars, anything, they stop and they're listening to you and Mark. In this yep. moment, what do you say to the world? Mark? Ooh. Man, I actually do pay attention to what's gone goes on in the world, and I and I'm trying to think what's happening 
right now, and I've been watching the news, you know, forever. And for some reason, I can't, re I can't remember it. Can you think of a final piece of advice you might give dad, whether it's, you know, people around the world or maybe, maybe someone else with Alzheimer's, what would you, what would you tell them dad? Yeah. I've had people say to me, eat ice cream. <laughs> Cause the trick is it's, it's the moment in the next moment. When I ask you, you may have another awesome message or a message for the person. So it's what you're feeling right now. And in fact, Mark, think about it, Travis, let me ask you. What would you say to the world? Um, keep the faith. Believe in yourself. You can do it. Yeah. Or he cheated. He took mine. <laughs> <laughs> he learned it from you. <laughs> That's right. All my, all my, all my sayings. I mean, I really did get them just, just from you, Dad. <laughs> you know, basically, what I would say is, don't, you know, don't be afraid. You've got Alzheimer's. Don't be afraid and just do the best you can do. And, and pretty soon you're going to be used to it. And, uh, and if, if you, if you happen to be in Colorado, give me a call and I'd be happy to ta talk to you. Well said, well said. Thank you guys so much for this, man. Uh, I, Travis, I hope I, I hope I know you both for the rest of my life, man. But likewise, Sean, really, really a pleasure yeah. to connect. Um, I am going to watch that Friends episode. Uh, would you, <laughs> is it, is it kid, my kids are 9 11. Is it kid, like, is it a good one for kids to watch or? Oh, or yeah, it's think? a Christmas yeah? episode. Okay. So, All right, buddy. I know what's going on <laughs> the TV tonight during my, you know, my, my back exercises and core work and stuff. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> and, and let awesome. me tell you, this, this, you know, I've done a lot of these and, and uh, this is the best, man. It was really uh, good. And it's, and it's, you're a great guy to talk to. And thank you very much for letting me spend some time with you. I'm the lucky one here, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. You can find Tough Mudder on Facebook and Twitter. That will be at Tough Mudder or on Instagram, also at Tough Mudder. Please remember you can find this podcast, No Excuses, on wherever you listen to podcasts. Guys, subscribe. Uh, uh, let me know what you like, what you're not liking, and I will be including you as much as possible and even more in the future. Inspirational. Be inspired. Inspire. No excuses. Motivational. Be motivated. Motivate. No excuses. No whining. No quitting. Overcome. No excuses. Community. Community. Teamwork. Tough. 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 Tough.